Hey everybody, Mental Fox here. Welcome to my playthrough of Moon Crash, the DLC for Prey. I just finished playing Prey on my channel, so if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you check that out. I don't know if uh, this game is a continuation of what happened in Prey. I don't think it's a continuation, um, but I also don't know if you need to have played Prey before playing or watching this. So just to be on the safe side, uh, make sure that you've already either played or watched a playthrough of Prey. Uh, very excited to get into this. I really, really liked Prey. It was a fantastic game. I had a lot of fun playing it. And as soon as I heard there was a DLC, I knew I had to have it. So now I have it. And now we're going to play it. Let's play Moon Crash. Um, looks like we have some different options here. We've got new game. Uh, Prey fans, Prey Moon Crash has everything you loved in Prey. The gameplay, narrative, and atmosphere, but with an exciting twist. In Moon Crash, you'll be making repeated runs through an ever-changing simulation of the Pythias moon base. Each run will represent represent each run will present new combinations of enemies, hazards, and loot. You might die a lot, but you'll also grow stronger and unlock new characters and gear to face these challenges. Huh. We hope you'll enjoy uncovering the mysteries of Pythias, what happened to its crew, and how to escape with your life. As always, thanks for playing our games. Pray dev team, Arcane Austin. I didn't know Arcane was in Austin. I'm in Austin. I'll have to go pay those guys a visit. I'm sure they'll just let me walk right in. And then return to Prey. I guess that uh, if you want to play regular Prey instead of uh, Moon Crash, you can do that. Options. Oh, man. I hope I don't have to remap my controls. Good, I don't. Excellent. Saved my controls from Prey. Okay, let's do new game here. Now entering the satellite. Okay. <laughs> so that was a kind of a weird description of the game. It kind of almost doesn't sound like a game. It sounds like a challenge. I haven't read about this at all. I, that's how I like to play my games. I don't like to read about them. I like to just jump in and start playing them. So I'm not really sure what to expect here. This is Basilisk. Hello. This is Basilisk to Gasmo Module 13. We are sending two classified pieces of technology we recovered from Transtar's moon base. They should be arriving in a few moments. One is an operator containing a backup of the base. It's a simulation of all the research data, company secrets, and connectomes from employee brains. We picked you because it's protected by a lot of encryption. Fortunately, it comes with a looking glass visor, so you'll be able to search the sim visually. You'll be plugging into the moon base as it was, seeing it through the personnel that was stationed there. There's a lot to do. I'm sending your orders along so you can check them off as you go. Oh, and congratulations. I am pleased to inform you that executing these orders will fulfill your contract. After you recover the data, we're going to pick you up. So great news. You'll be with family soon. <laughs> okay, M13, you're the expert. The delivery is docking now, so I'll leave you to it. Hmm. Transport craft African B KTL 17. Commencing docking procedure. Please stand by to receive payload. Okay. <laughs> What are we on? Chasma's orders. Install the simulation visor on the satellite chair. Uh, connect the data vault operator to the main computer. That's a really cool view out there. Huh. Well, let's uh, bring up our objective screen. Oh! Do I not have any objectives? Either that or my keys are mapped weird. Um, hmm. Well, there's our shadow, and you saw earlier up there we had a tattoo on our arm. It looked kind of like a woman's arm to me, but I'm not sure. We have some emails here. Uh, Orbital Intercept Satellite KSS 1976-13M. And then we've got some statuses up there. All life support systems online operating at full efficiency. This is good. Let's look at our emails. Um, from Basilisk, that's who we were just talking to, to this station. Reminder, this is just a friendly reminder. Operative shall diligently pursue to the company's reasonable satisfaction complete, completion of the data acquisition in accordance with the contract schedule. 
Failure to meet satisfaction will extend said contract for a duration equal to time lost by the company plus reasonable damages and or penalties. Such damages and penalties are not eligible for arbitration. Please keep this in mind as we move toward the end of your contract with Casmacorp. I know you are looking forward to seeing family again, and a setback at this point would be unfortunate. Okay. Gratz, also from Basilisk. Nice work up there. Despite the cost, we've dispatched a delivery to you, including a flower from your wife's garden back home. Everyone appreciates your hard work, including me. You're really chipping away at that contract. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm not really sure what to make of all this. Uh, the Starbender Cycle 2 Book 1. Rebirthed from the Star Womb. Oh boy, more Starbender stuff. Excerpt from the Starbender Saga Cycle 2. The Cronus Chronicle Book 1. Rebirthed from the Star Womb by Fletcher McMarvin. It goes like this. A crash like a train made of screams running headlong into a school full of glass children. <laughs> Trevor Pulsar winced as the deafening sound blinded him. Sticky. Trevor was sticky and ached from head to boot. Where was he? How was he even alive? As his eyes slowly adjusted, his brain began to lurch, then spin into action. The Dark Star Anomaly, Empress Tourmaline, the Starbender Prism. He remembered Tourmaline's words as the galaxy split between them. Find me, Pulsar. Find the Prism. As Trevor finally heaved himself up upright, ugh, heaved himself upright, what he saw confirmed his fears. A cracked stone tower jutted against a rolling medieval sky as dragons wheeled overhead. I've been sent back in time, Trevor sighed. Can't wait to read more of those. Now let's look around our shuttle here. I like to kind of make myself at home. The new pharaohs. Excerpt from a book about indentured servitude by Kung Mo Jackson. The Rise of Corporations, discussed in such books as Pure Evil by Tracy Webb and Your Numbers Up by John Johnson, discusses many challenges to humanism in a world driven by profit. What even these social scientists didn't see coming was a new way of collective bargaining based on relinquishing innate human rights in exchange for better benefits, wages, pensions, and lifestyles. A trend in employee contracts, especially among exciting high-profile companies like Transtar, now onboard recruits via enticements and compensation offered nowhere else. But the clauses lurking in these contracts provide for punitive debts, which the employee must pay the company should he or she fail to meet them. I guess that's, or fail to meet plan. I guess that's what's happened to our character here. We are repaying a debt. This can lead to a state of indentured servitude, which the contract gags the employee from discussing and prohibits arbitration against. Aha. So if you've never watched one of my playthroughs before, I like to read stuff. I read everything. So this episode may be a little slow if uh, there's a lot of stuff to read. Here's our little sleeping nook here. I like to pick things up and see if there's anything underneath of them. Here's a calendar that I can't seem to get. Okay, I can. To-do list, water, plants maybe, clean bathroom, something. Um, read Starbender again and shower. July 7th. Hmm. Over here is a little doll and a photo of a little girl with the doll. And we've got uh, what looks like a note here. A report card and a little drawing. Books with a smiley face. Home away from home. Books, books, something, storage. There is a maintenance access panel up there. That makes me think that at some point we are going to be in zero gravity in order to get up there. Just a thought. Here is the um, toilet. I'm going to guess that maybe, well, not sure what language that may have been. The Talos 1 was a Russian, originally a Russian space station, so everything you'd see uh, stuff written in Russian. But uh, that does not look like a Russian uh, alphabet there. 
toilet flush. Guess it's our shower, maybe. Okay, well, we can't see our uh, reflection. Okay. Well, I guess we'll go out here. Here is an LG visor and a recovered operator. Let's pick up the visor. Huh. Okay, I picked it up. I think I'm supposed to install it. There we go. There we did that. And here, I'm gonna take the operator and we're gonna install it right here. Data vault operator. Okay, we did that. Sit down to initiate Pythias Moonbase Sim. System ready. So we're gonna sit here and enter the simulation. This is very Assassin's Creed. It's like entering the an Animus. That's what it feels like. All right, let's enter the simulation. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> Select a crew member. Neat. Okay, these other guys are all locked here. So, a volunteer, director, security officer, custodian, and engineer. Uh, Andreas Alekna, Andreas's mind, is brimming with psychic potential waiting to be unlocked. But repeat exposure to Neuromod technology has left his body frail. As the last volunteer test subject on the Pythias moon base, Andreas hopes to escape and see his young son again. Key abilities, kinetic blast, super thermal backlash, and bro, this is going to be tough because if you watch my play playthrough, I really didn't use my um, psychic abilities at all. So this is going to be a very, very different uh, play style for me. Uh, default loadout, we get a T ration, Psy Hypo, here's our health and Psy. Abilities, progress, not sure what's going on there. Uh, story objective, escape with the volunteer through the mimic portal to unlock their story objective. Okay. Um, okay, main objective, escape the moon. All right, let's uh, go ahead and do this. Launch moon-based simulation. Sure, that's why we're here, right? What else am I gonna do? So we're this person in some kind of spacecraft that has to sit through these simulations for some reason. Now entering Crater. The Crater Dome protects the station from harmful solar, harmful solar radiation. It's too bad we don't get a chance to read those. Okay, here we are. All crew members. This is an emergency broadcast. Please report to designated escape pod stations and prepare for evacuation. If you are unable to reach an escape pod, security will track your position as they conduct a final sweep before launching. Well, same music from the main game here. This is one of my favorite pieces of music, though. Let's uh, pick up our makeshift weapon. Ooh, press T to view tutorial. Sure, why not? Show me the tutorial. Wrench. The Hephaestus hef Hefty Twist and Loop Handle Wrench is standard issue for all maintenance personnel employed in Transtar facilities, good for liberal application of percussive maintenance and mechanical agitation. Yep, and we know how to use that. Uh, okay. Okay, so tutorials. Hmm, Chasma Orders. Completing all items on the Chasma Orders checklist will fulfill your contract to Chasma Corp. You can view your progress on the Chasma Orders tab in your Transcribe. Okay, and then I know how to use all this stuff. I don't need this. So do I have a Transcribe? Here's my objectives. Oh, this one's locked. Hmm, okay. Escape objectives. Escape the simulation. Reach the main Pythias crater. 
I need to escape the Pythias moon base. Since this is my first time in the simulation, I should get my bearings by heading to the main crater. Well, if you say so. View on map. Well, don't really have a whole lot to see here. Command center power control. <laughs> uh, moon base. Crater crew NX. Moonworks and Pythias Labs. So this place isn't very big. Uh, we have an inventory. We've got uh, two tea ra rations. A clay-like brick of essential nutrients. While not delicious, it has the distinction of being the first edible substance created and a fabricator. Hmm. And then some psi hypos and we got our wrench here. We have no neuromods right now. Um, and we really don't have any abilities either to speak of. Status. Well, currently we're this guy. And uh, data. Moon base stability report one. Uh, the simulation is a, an extrapolation from the data and interacts with corruption dynamically between resets. Additional data recovery may lead to increased variability. Okay, somebody drew a little thing there. Known variables, resource locations, creature types and locations, door states. So, I guess these aren't going to change? I'm not sure what that means. Email, which we just read. Audio logs, none. Keys, none. Plans, none. Research, none. And then just some stats, stats here. Okay. Well, here's a body. Terry Brown. 50-something huh, gained. Ventilation storage key card. And then, oh, a silenced pistol ammo fabrication plan. And the silenced pistol fabrication plan. Nice. Excellent. Okay, that's good. Oh, you... A thermal mimic? Okay, well, welcome to the game. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, like I said, I like to pick things up because I like to look underneath of them. And what do I pick up? A freaking thermal phantom? Well, we got him. Oh man, I need necropsy in order to pick that up. Ah, shoot. Not uh, sure what that is. Some kind of light or something. So Ch Terry Brown here. Don't know why she's dead or what killed her. Well, we need to unlock this to get move move forward. Hello, Typhon material detected. Typhon gates. Typhon material detected. Okay. Well, we saw a mimic walk over there. There's not a whole lot I could do about it. I can zoom in. See if I see anything vibrate. Oh, I can just be ready to whack. Whoa, 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 whoa! Did I get him? Jeez. Okay, game. Just throw crap at me all of a sudden. Jeez. Need some freaking health, man. Um, Here's some shotgun shells that I'm going to gladly pick up. Damn, if I come up against another Typhon, I'm probably going to die. Super early in the game. Sheesh. I'm just looking. I do have a flashlight, okay. Typhon gate information. Use this station to monitor, monitor and track nearby Typhon. Well, unfortunately, I can't track anything. Typhon gates. Typhon gates create an impassable force field when they detect the presence of Typhon or Typhon material. Use the control terminal to mark any nearby Typhon. Note, with enough Typhon abilities installed, you will register as Typhon by the Typhon Gate. EMP or electrical-based attacks can temporarily disable Typhon Gates. Huh, press to track. Hmm. Okay. I guess it's just these are to keep Typhon from moving about the station.
Huh. Are we in some kind of dome or something? Yeah, I guess we are, because you can see our bare hand there. We're not wearing a suit. Space suit. Pythias moon base. Space to jump and shift to sprint. C to crouch or slide while sprinting. <laughs> I think that was an ability I had in the main game, but I never once used it. It's too complicated. Another body down there. Another Typhon gate over there, it looks like. Okay. Well, what's this over here? Gate bypass. Improper use can result in severe injury or death. Okay, I think I shut it down. Gate reactivation in oh. three. Okay, that's two, fine. One. That's okay, I'm okay with that. Go ahead and reactivate. Man, I'm afraid it's gonna be freaking Typhon everywhere now. Damn. I mean, I guess. Huh. I guess I could eat a little bit of one of these stupid ration things. Get my health up a little tiny bit. Is this the right way to go? I'm not even sure. Go around this way, maybe? The hell is this dome made out of? It's like a stitched up football or something. Something over here. Looks like there's low gravity here. Look how I jump around. Cool shadow. Here's some supplies. Suit repair kit, that could come in handy. Here's Mandy Ballard, she's got some bullets on her. Frayed wire, anti-rad pharma fabrication plan. It's kinda nice. Uh, also, if this is your first time watching one of my playthroughs, I like to explore. I like to see what there is to see. I like to look for hidden things, hidden places, hidden objects. Hidden treasures. I like it. And sometimes I find cool, find cool stuff, and sometimes I don't. Alright. Oh, wow. Whoa, look at me go. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking around, man. What's this? Ooh, some goodies. Supply crate. Dermaweb skin graft? Test tube sample. Let's look at our inventory. This is a new thing. Uh, a web of synthetic skin used to heal burn trauma. Oh, goody. I can't wait till I have to use that. Uh, skeletal repair kit. Oh, even better. A collagen construction kit to repair broken bones and tendon damage, removing fracture trauma. Oh, great. And then some stuff that I can't pick up there. Um, so over here is the entrance to the crater, it would seem. But I thought I saw another body out here from up above. So I want to see if we can't find that body. Here we go. Body right here. And then there's some stuff up there too we're going to look at. Here's Benjamin Wheeler. Two suit repair kits, some bullets. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, here's a supply crate with just a frayed wire in it. Explosive canister. <laughs> I love the shadows. Look at that. <laughs> the shadow of the cargo disappears. There's another body up there. These sounds are making me nervous. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap! Oh man, I wanted to make it across there so I could get to that body. I was worried it was going to hurt me. 
rock. Oh, mother... F f Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why did I feel like I needed to pick up that stupid rock? <sighs> Good grief. Um... Well, we saw a body up there, but I can't get up there yet. I'm gonna guess that... Uh, ooh, a medkit. I'm gonna guess that at some point in the game, uh, I will, um... Get the ability to, uh jump higher and farther and at that point uh, I'll be able to jump up there and we'll be able to take a look at that body but as for right now uh, I don't think I can make it across there because I did a sprint and a jump oh I made it <laughs> cool who's this how'd you end up up here Mickey Peppers some bullets some plastic tubing oh Mickey Peppers how did you end up there? Hmm, there's another place I wonder if I could get up to. If there's any goodies up there. Well, we're supposed to go to the crater. So here is another uh, three Typhon in range. Really? Press to track. Oh, okay, that makes them uh, show up. Really? Three Typhon in range. Oh, they're, they're, they're marked now. Okay, cool. Hmm. Well, it's not going to let me go in here. Uh, because of the Typhon. So, um, I need to take these Typhon out before I can go in there. Which sucks, because I was kind of hoping I could get a, um, ranged weapon. Before I had to take these guys on. But, uh, no such luck. That's cool. Can I sneak up on it? Take a good whack at it? Damn it. Guess not. Okay, I hit it. And I don't think it hit me at all. Cool. Okay. One right here. Nice. Whoa. Okay, weird sound effects. We got him without taking any damage. Let's try the same thing with this guy. I think we got him too. I don't know where his body went though. It's rolling down the hill there. I want your guts, dude. There. When we get necropsy, we'll have to come back here and loot those guys. Other body here. So I hope this isn't timed. I hope I don't need to get through here in a certain amount of time, because if so, I'm already in trouble. Ooh, a shotgun! 53%. Uh oh. So I say uh oh because it looks like 53%, these things may be. Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Deteriorate with use? The thrown tactical shotgun provides maximum damage at close range. Effectiveness falls off significantly at longer range. It doesn't mention anything about it's, uh, you know, it getting worse as time goes on. But 53% uh, makes me think that that is the case. Yeah, 53%. Firepower, huh, integrity, 53%. So, I guess maybe there's going to be, like, weapon repair kits in this game. Not sure how I feel about that. Just seeing if there's any goodies hiding around here. I feel like I'm going to need every little bit of help I could get. Escape the simulation. Reach the main Pythias crater. Well, apparently we've reached it. Now we need to use a security station to find an available escape pod. Really? Just like that, huh? Just like that. I need to escape the Pythias moon base. I can check one of the security stations to see if there are any available escape, escape pods. I'm not sure what this is all about. Uh, story objective. It's all in your head. Playable crew members 
each have their own story missions accessible after certain conditions have been met. Escape with the volunteer through the mimic portal to unlock this mission. This is weird. But I am intrigued. And I am excited to be in this world again. It's pretty cool. There's a big old pyramid up there. That's neat. I don't know what the hell's going on over there. But that is bizarre looking. Is that like a malfunctioning um, looking glass maybe? Or maybe I'm just so far away from it that it's not drawing correctly. Here's another body. Here is um, a note. Typhon lures. Until those kill towers are working, Typhon lures are still our best bet for drawing them away from the gates. I already put a wreck in for the lab techs to fab more. V. Batia. Michael Chung here, here though. Uh, suit repair kits. Recycler charge. Uh huh. Recycler charge. Well, I know these things from the previous game. Um, when detonated, the recycler charge breaks down the molecular structure of nearby objects into recyclable material. Your uniform offers some degree of protection, but it is. But is not fail-safe. My uniform, huh? You mean my volunteer jumpsuit? Standing too close can prove hazardous. And then a Typhon lore. Which I used a little bit in the main game, but not much. I didn't think it worked that well, to tell you the truth. Uh, a Typhon lure, a.k.a. Nightlight, emits a psycholuminescent signal that entices Typhon to move toward the lure for a short period of time. Combined with other weapons or tactics to escape, ambush, or observe Typhon from a safe distance. It can be thrown or affixed to a stationary object uh, using mouse one. I'm not ready to use that yet. Another body over here. It's kind of interesting how these... Whoa, there's a freaking weaver over there. I'm not ready for weavers, or is that a weaver? What is that? Is that a weaver? Uh, kind of looks like one. I'm not ready to face a weaver. Jeez, game. Throwing a weaver at me already? This is so neat. Another body here. Um, Kim Young Yin. More suit repair kits. Glue charge. Yeah. Okay. I already know what this is. I don't need to read that. Frayed wire. Is that not going to go away? Glue charge. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, this is different. <laughs> I wasn't even going to read this one. This isn't the same stuff. This isn't a glue canister. This is a glue charge. The glue charge utilizes the same technology developed by Transtar for the glue cannon, disabling and or immobilizing targets without... Did I say immobilizing? Immobilizing targets without harming them, but targets a much larger area with a single detonation. As with the cannon, it can also extinguish flames, temporarily stop electric arcs, and creates climbable platforms. They can be thrown or fixed. Oh boy. Not sure how I feel about that. Occasional dust storms. Okay. Another body down there. We're supposed to go to a security workstation. But uh, let's go over here to this body. See what's up. I mean, what happened to these people? Did the Typhon get them? Jens Bremer. Some spare parts on all Jens here. Huh. Not sure what that sound is, but I don't like it. Oh, cystoid nest. Hmm. A cystoid nest. Well. How's that make you feel? Can I pick up this rock and throw it at it? Rock. <laughs> nice throw, dude. Oh, there goes my rock. Oh my gosh. The 
Did that work? I think that might have worked. A glue turret. Um. Okay, so there's stuff I could pick up and throw around. Deploy. A glue turret. Okay. So I guess it was radioactive there because we were underneath of a, um... Whoa. What the... What? what? Harvester? What was that freaking sound effect? I was going to say, I thought it was radioactive because we were underneath of a cystoid nest above us. Whoa. Whoa, what, huh? Um... Is a harvester... Whoa! Proximity warning. Is this good or bad? Is this going to attack me? Or is it a friendly? Harvester. Okay, I don't know what to make of that. I'm just still trying to get rid of this cystoid nest over here. Service request. Log four. Hover pads. Oh, did I do it? Well, not bad, but didn't quite get it. I need something else to throw at him. And it's going to be this. Let's see how this works. Get up there. Come on. Come on. I know you can get up there. You just did it. Um, what the hell's going on all of a sudden? Well, I don't know where the... Oh, there's the harvester. Oh, he's acting weird. Let's see if I could throw these. Oh, man. Well. Oh, did that not work? Well, poo. Cystoid. I need to find something to throw at him. Is he coming at me? He is. Yeah. Well, maybe I could just run away from him. Let him chase me and then I'll run away. Whoa, hello. <laughs> Man. Cystoids? Jeez. I need some more stuff to throw. Is he coming at me? Typhon Tower? Typhon Tower? What the hell's going on over there? Is there something wrong with my looking glass that's causing that to happen? Is it like an area I haven't unlocked yet? Also very much like Assassin's Creed. I haven't synced that area yet. Here's Sally Kuzmina. Spare parts recycler charge. I'm getting a little radioactive. Hmm. The cystoids over there? That it is, isn't it? I see ya. Uh well, I lost one bit of health. Oh, okay. Well. I don't know why my guy's acting like that hurt so bad. It didn't really Caused me to lose that much health. I was just trying to run past them to um, get them to explode. Psychostatic cutter? <laughs> What's this thing? Okay. It's a freaking lightsaber. Psychostatic cutter. The psychostatic cutter is a prototype weapon that utilizes psionic interference to cause mental damage as well as physical damage. Use mouse 1 to swing your psychostatic cutter. Press and hold mouse 1 to charge your attack and release a psionic projectile that ignores physical barriers. All psychostatic cutter attacks will drain your stamina. Charged attacks consume psi points. Interesting. Well, can't wait to try that out. I say as I put it away and get out my trusty wrench.
Alright, cystoid. I need to find something to throw in there. Um, there was a rock in here, wasn't there? Eh, let's see. Can I throw a light in there? That might be fun. <laughs> that worked pretty well. But I think that there's more. I think there's a cystoid nest in here still. Oh no, there's... Oh, okay. Nice. Did I get them all? I think I did. Way to go, me. Harvester destroyed. Control module. Exotic material. Mineral material. Spare parts. I don't know how to do that yet. If we look at our inventory. And we look at this control module. It says it's a fuse-like component used to operate several proprietary Transtar technologies, including the Moonbase Tram and Typhon Towers. Caution volatile. Produces strong EMP when damaged. Ugh. So we're in a Typhon Tower right now. I don't know what a Typhon Tower is or what it's for. But uh, that's what we're in. Here is a laser turret. It's just kind of... Um, I'm just going to set this here for the time being. Oh, look at this guy. He's actually dripping blood. Or this woman. Uh, I guess... There we go. Catch the blood. It stops when we get right underneath of it. Hard hat area, I guess. So, what the heck is a Typhon Tower? I mean, I know that's what I'm looking at right now, but what is it? What's it for? What does it do? And, um, this component that I've picked up, where do I put it? Lots of questions that need to be answered. All right, I'm going to walk over here and see what the heck's going on. Crew Annex. So I guess this is a place I can't go yet. Yep, sure enough, I can't walk further that way. <laughs> it's pretty neat. <laughs> it's a pretty neat effect. I'm just going to keep walking around here, checking this place out. Some crap lying around out here. I'm going to loot everything I can find, because I'm going to need it. Remember we saw a freaking weaver off in the distance. I'm going to try to steer clear of that. Kind of reminds me of one of the rock quarries in uh, Fallout 4. One of those excavators there. Something interesting here, this building. Looks like the security workstation maybe is going to be in the basement of that building? Well, here's an entrance here to something. It's making that noise, you hear that? That might be a phantom walking around that I hear. Yep, it is. There's a phantom around here. That familiar thrumming of their footsteps. Ooh, Liza Oduye. Another shotgun. Shotgun shells. Uh, our first Neuromod. Neuromods and abilities. The Neuromod is a revolutionary Transtar invention that allows you to learn new skills and abilities. Press N to open your transcribe and navigate to the Neuromod section. Abilities are saved after a simulation reset. Neuromods are not, so remember to use them. I see. Uh, 
after a simulation reset. Does that mean if does that mean if I die, I lose my neuromod? Huh. Well, psionic aptitude one increases your psi pool by fifty. Or we could start getting some of this stuff here. Ooh. Regenerate up to 10 health immediately after taking damage. Yes, please. <laughs> Just stick that in your eye. Oh, jeez. Alright, so it's just like taking home movies. Disruptor batteries. Ooh, we got the disruptor stun gun. Nice. Oh, that was a scary sound effect. So we have the disruptor stun gun, which we used in the main game. The disruptor stun gun will knock out human targets. Typhon are more resistant, but can still be temporarily stunned. Robotic devices can also be temporarily disabled and ultimately destroyed by this disruptor. Nice. She got some... Oh, no, she doesn't. So we can't go in there because... Two Typhon nearby. Ooh, here's a note. Typhon Gate workaround. Casey, pro tip for you. I got stuck on the wrong side of a Typhon Gate the other day. Phantom almost ate my ass until I figured out I could zap the sensor with my stun gun. My stun gun. I guess we should tell engineering, but then they'd fix it. VJ, interesting. So we could get in there. Without having to track Typhon. Let's go ahead and track him. There's one down there. And there's one right here. Um, they're just dumb old mimics. I think I got him. He may have hurt me a little bit though. Just a little bit. I do not want to run into that phantom this early in the game. Nice! What was that? Did you hear that? It was like a voice. What was that? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. I'm afraid to go in that direction. I hear a phantom over there. So now, I could go in here, but... We're not supposed to go in there yet. I'm supposed to go to a security workstation. Why? Um, well, to see if there's any available escape pods. But we'll do that next time. It's time for me to end this episode. Uh, I am very intrigued. I'm still not sure how this is all going to play out. This whole business of playing as different characters. So um, we'll just play through it together. Oh, there's the phantom. Yeah, I don't want him to see me. I'm going to go down here. We'll play through it together and we'll see how this works out. I'm I, I'm not sure how I feel about it because I'm guessing that when I play as another character, we're going to be going through the same area, but maybe not. I don't know. Only one way to find out, and that's to play the game. Thank you guys so much for joining me at the start of Moon Crash for Prey. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode. If you have, why don't you let me know by leaving me a like or a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on the first hour or so of Moon Crash. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you'll join me again in the next episode.